Greetings, this is Ron from the Encyclopedia team. It is with great pleasure today we have Dr. Klopov to this interview. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for kind interest to activity which I undertake in the field of cosmoparticle physics, linking a fundamental structure of micro world to global property of universe as a whole. So, Dr. Klopov, before we dive into your research topic, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, I am uh, working for a long period in the field of uh, uh, cosmology, uh, particle physics, and uh, fundamental relationship between particle physics, cosmology, and uh, fundamental uh, uh, links between uh, uh, structure of micro world reflected in fundamental uh, properties of uh, universe. Uh, I'd like to uh, show you uh, some uh, examples of my activity related with uh, in series of books which are dedicated to this uh, um, topic, uh, as well as uh, I'd like to say something about my uh, my history. It is, uh, I worked with Zeldovich and uh, Sakharov in uh, development of such activities. We created Center for Cosmoparticle Physics to join physicists, astronomers, cosmologists, and uh, uh, particle physicists of so Soviet Union. Uh, but uh, it turned out that actually uh, most of them are now spread all over the world. And uh, uh, instead of having a real form of activity, we should come to some online uh, activity, which is supported by uh, Virtual Institute of Astroparticle Physics, which I created. It, work, uh, it uh, operates on its website, and here you may see Google Analytics about the uh, visits from all the world to our site. So let me return back to normal format of interview. Thank you very much. So our next question is, could you please provide a little bit more background on cosmoparticle physics? So actually, uh, uh, the idea that there is fundamental relationship between knowledge of micro and macro world, uh, it is tradition of fundamental physics to link to microscopical and macroscopical description. But uh, now uh, in uh, the 80s of uh, previous century, People have understood that in the general laws of universe and micro world, uh, we are obliged to find uh, its uh, relationship and to uh, understand how we can study. The problem is that actually uh, we, uh, in order to study elementary particles, we create more and more effective, uh, larger and uh, more energetic colliders. But uh, uh, we know some limits for such colliders. The idea was that if we uh, theoretically uh, look at the early stages of expanding universe when it was very hot and very dense and there were very high energetic particles, we have a natural laboratory for that. The problem is that modern cosmology found that the basic principles of work of uh, universe uh, involve uh, that uh, hypothetical theoretical ideas which particle physicists want to study uh, with the use of this collider. So uh, the problem is how we can simultaneously find proper way to prove both the basic laws of nature together with the uh, uh, natural evolution of the universe. And that is the basic idea of cosmoparticle physics to find a way from this vicious circle of problems. On one side, you just uh, use cosmology to probe new physics, but this new physics should govern uh, cosmology. So in order to go out of it, we develop a system of a uh, uh, set of uh, uh, model dependent uh, uh, features, which can be probed uh, simultaneously in cross-disciplinary studies involving physical experiment, astronomical observations, uh, space experiments, uh, underground experiments, and so on. That, that is the basic idea of our approach. Thank you very much. I have always been curious about the universe outside our Earth 
So what makes you want to research cosmoparticle physics? Did you get any influence from other people? Oh, yes, uh, sure. In my life, I was lucky uh, three times in my scientific development. In my youth, I uh, used to, to be rather closely uh, acquainted with uh, uh, Pyotr Kapitz, uh, Nobel Prize winner in physics. And his personality certainly played an important role at the first step of my uh, physics education. Then I was very lucky to work uh, with uh, uh, Jakob Zildovich, and uh, we uh, started with him uh, creation of a body which can uh, direct uh, this uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, cross-disciplinary research in Soviet Union. Unfortunately, he passed by. And then uh, I continued to work with Andrei Sakharov, whose personality, I think, doesn't uh, uh, just need any description, but it is important that here it is another aspect of his personality. It is his... Uh, 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 great uh, leg legacy in just uh, uh, putting together uh, physics, new physics and uh, its cosmological laws. And actually, after uh, he passed by, we had to continue a program which we started to elaborate with him. And uh, uh, this uh, program uh, just uh, resulted in rather important uh, uh, mm, uh, presentations at six international conferences which we held in 1990s and uh, uh, to, to, to 2001, 2004. Um, so now we uh, move to this uh, virtual institute to uh, just make uh, uh, more broad uh, uh, relationship and correlation between different. I'm sure the collapse of the Soviet Union didn't make you the research any easier. But what is the innovative part about your research? Is there any limitation to your research? Uh, yes, actually, uh, it is clear that now this uh, linking cosmology and particle physics is uh, uh, certainly a mainstream of fundamental science. So in that sense, we uh, just uh, uh, should uh, uh, propose something what is uh, uh, specific and trivial. In that case, uh, my uh, concern is uh, to, uh, to uh, well, actually, uh, people now agree completely that there should be inflation, which explains the initial stage of uh, cosmological evolution. People think that the create, uh, proposed by uh, Sakharov uh, mechanism of barrier synthesis explains why we do see matter around us and not see a, a similar amount of antimatter. Uh, there should be dark matter which and dark energy which governs uh, modern evolution. All that is related to predictions of particle theory or more generally fundamental uh, physics because we can also involve gravity and we can talk about modified gravity. So we have some new effects which uh, can uh, provide explanation for this fundamental basis of modern cosmology. However, different models give us different uh, uh, explanations. And the question is, how can we make choice between these different approaches? So my uh, recent ideas, uh, which I develop uh, uh, with support of Russian science foundations on the basis of uh, uh, Research Institute of Physics of South and Federal University, uh, is just uh, to specify that there is, uh, uh, so now people say about uh, multi-messenger astronomy saying that, in, in fact, we now not only consider uh, astronomical observation in different uh, uh, ranges of uh, electromagnetic spectrum, but we also use neutrino astronomy, cosmic rays, uh, but also now gravitational wave astronomy. So it is multi-messenger astronomy. My idea is to confront multi-messenger astronomy to multi-messenger cosmology, taking into account that each realistic explanation or inflation barrier synthesis, dark matter, should involve model-dependent predictions which can lead to additional effects which can make proper choice between different approaches. That is my uh, basic element of my specific research. It is great to hear great progress on the outer space as most people are just as curious as I am. So my <laughs> question is, what are the challenges that you are facing in the current situation? Is there any difficulty you have experienced regarding your research? 
uh, well, actually, the uh, basic challenge for us is to understand how we can explain the fact that we live in the world which is full of dark darkness. It is dark energy which governs modern uh, uh, acceleration of the universe. It is dark matter which dominates in matter content. So uh, the known part of the uh, uh, world uh, is no more than 4% of total energy uh, density of universe. So it's a great challenge to understand their nature and to use the new unknown forces to make them, new, uh, to make them known and to, to use them. So actually we have great uh, uh, challenge and uh, certainly uh, the hope is that the methods of cosmoparticle physics can provide us with possibility uh, not only to probe some particular uh, predictions, but also to find out the way in which we can uh, uh, just uh, uh, explore uh, this uh, these part, uh, so wide spots of our knowledge. Uh, well, uh, uh, for, for me personally now, it is uh, a great interest to uh, combine the fact that people in dark matter searches find some uh, uh, contradiction between different groups. Some of them claim that they do observe effect of dark matter, others say no. So my uh, idea is to explain how it is and uh, to relate it with collider searches of new uh, particles. So actually it is just this cross-disciplinary analysis which can give us very definite answers. Well, you know that if you have uh, uh, you study something, uh, you should uh, have all the determined system of equation relative to unknown parameters. Uh, if you have this, so you should have number of equations larger than number of unknown parameters. Then uh, you either get proper answer, proper choice of these parameters, or you rule out this approach. And so the cosmoparticle physics, uh, which starts from the fact that you have two unknown for one universe. You mean you don't know evolution of the universe and physics on which it is based. Now we just uh, make a lot of uh, extra equations, uh, uh, just linking uh, different aspects of astrophysical, uh, physical and cosmological phenomena which accompany each approach and that can give us, us uh, uh, a question about proper basis, physical basis and proper history of the as I am sure, there are a lot more knowledge that we need to know about our outer space. But my question is, will further research be needed for cosmoparticle physics? What is your next move? Well, actually, uh, my uh, belief is that uh, uh, we can hardly understand uh, everything during my life. Uh, maybe it is a challenge for not even century, but millennial. Because uh, the wider we explore space, we may come to some ideas that probably our three-dimensional space-time is not uh, the only dimensions which are in nature. Nature may be multidimensional, and so we can go out and uh, you know that there are theories in which uh, people discuss uh, nine uh, space dimensions, we live only in three. So we are point of point in such a real world so we have, uh, we need a huge amount of progress to come out of this point of point and understand the whole uh, nature as it is. I'm sure it is beautiful, but this beauty uh, may be very specific and we should uh, get, uh, get acquainted to proper uh, aesthetical means to understand. Thank you, and we sure hope everything will go smoothly as your research goes on. So. What are your main interests in your next following research? Well, uh, as I told you, our main uh, interests now are related uh, when I already mentioned the uh, uh, project uh, which I'm working in, uh, the Research Institute of Physics of Southern Federal uh, University. Uh, on Rostov on Don, uh, where my group uh, is just uh, uh, studying the problem which we now uh, face on uh, in uh, the uh, um, search for new particles at the collider. At the uh, 
which I drank later, just was uh, uh, strongly motivated by the uh, theory, uh, wide theoretical exp uh, expectation that inevitably it should give us new physics, which is needed to explain our uh, problems of the standard model. One of the important predictions was that we should find uh, a huge amount of new so-called supersymmetric particles. It is heavy partners of ordinary uh, particles, but we have a different spin, so for electron where scalar particles, electron, or for photon, there should be some uh, um, particle with uh, one half spin, which is called patina. So actually, this all this set of predicted particles was expected to be part there, and they are not. And it puts forward the question how we can solve problems of the standard model without this theoretical construction. And uh, uh, it may lead to another explanation of the properties of uh, these uh, uh, fundamental parameters like uh, Higgs boson, which was uh, discovered at uh, uh, the uh, Large Hadron Collider in two, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, the question is uh, uh, what is uh, uh, the uh, theoretical uh, support for its properties because formally its mass should be infinite, so we should somehow find the way how to fix the value which we measure. And it may be because this Higgs boson is not elemental, it contains some uh, constituents. And uh, uh, if these constituents have electric charge, they may also. Oh, so you have, you, if you have constituent and anti-constituent, it is neutral object. But if you have constituent and constituent, then you have some charged object. So my idea is, and the challenge is to uh, look for effects which may lead to very non-trivial explanation of what that matter. It may not be elementary uh, new weakly uh, interacting massive particles. Also, very popular candidate for dark matter was that uh, if you have supersymmetry, like a supersymmetry particle, particle can be stable. It can uh, and it can be weakly interacting, massive can play the role of dark matter. But it turns out that uh, WIMP searches don't have definite uh, answer to this. But on definiteness, it looks like that it is uh, uh, negative. So uh, if we don't have beams, what are candidates for dark matter? So my research is related to pos possible new forms of dark matter. And very interesting is that uh, in principle, we talk about new particles, which are neutral. Because otherwise, if they are charged, they can uh, bind with electrons, if they are positively charged, and they form some uh, new forms of stable matter, which we don't have. So here, the idea is that uh, 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 it turns out that uh, if you have minus two charged particles, then in early universe it binds with primordial helium, and you have such a very non uh, dark atom quantum candidate. Just search how to uh, explain the paradoxes of the dark researchers as well as just to find out what is the uh, astrophysical and physical consequences. Thank you very much, Dr. Karlopov. So we wish you and your team the best luck for your future endeavors. And thank you very much for joining us.